Hello, Mojo Tears. It is Jackson Galaxy, your cat daddy. I'm just in a singing mood today. I'm just, I just have to sing to you. Today, we're taking a question about brushing. Lots of questions about brushing your cat. Do I have to brush my cat? Why do I have to brush my cat? What happens when my cat does dot, dot, dot? And with that dot, dot, dot in mind, let's cut to the chase and cut to our friend Andy, who is uh, asking questions about brushing with her cat Lola Mae. Let's do it. Hi, Jackson. My name's Andy. I'm a longtime fan. My question for you today is about brushing. This is my lovely Lola Mae, but I oftentimes just call her monkey because I think she looks a little bit and acts a little bit like a monkey. When I brush Lola, sometimes she gets really excited and she just wants me to brush her face. <laughs> kind of like that. Come on, I'm trying to show him. Oh, she's being stubborn. And no matter how much I try, like if I, even though, um, <laughs> she literally came in and turned it off. I can't brush the rest of her body. Like she'll just let me brush her face and her whiskers. So um, anyways, that was uh, me and Lola May. Um, we'll talk to you later, bye. All right, Andy, thank you for sharing that lovely clip. I mean, come on, it, that is one cute Lola May. Clearly, I mean, you guys have a really cute ritual around brushing, but then you've got the other side of it, which is she's calling the shots. I like it when you do this. I don't like it when you do this, so bye bye uh, So Lola May is definitely calling all the shots here, Andy, which, I mean, is very endearing. So let's break it down because there's a, a couple of different things, I think, that we have to bear in mind. Number one. And especially when you take a look at a cat like Lola Mae, who is uh, a long-haired cat, is brushing necessary? Oh yeah, brushing is necessary. Uh, one of the things that we always want to make sure of, especially with long-haired cats, is mats. Mats on the cats. No mats on cats. Hop on pop. I do not like green eggs and ham. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, just <laughs> cracking myself up. <laughs> Mats basically are uh, hairs coming together. They, it's like dreadlocks, which let me tell you, good thing that you guys have never seen it, but I used to have dreadlocks back in the day when I had hair, so that was a while. But you know, and really all you're doing is sort of twisting it and letting it sit and it turns into a big knot and that's a dreadlock. Well, dreadlocks on cats are not a good thing. One of the things is that it's really painful. Um, it gets close to their skin. Their skin is like tissue paper, really. I mean, their skin is very thin. And now you're pulling and pulling it sometimes every time they move. If you take a look at uh, Lola Mae's, sorry Lola Mae, but let's look at your backside here. And her backside is, it's long hair. If you think about Matt's forming uh, around that back leg, you know, on her butt and on her hips, every time she moves her legs, it's gonna hurt. And you're gonna see cats over time stop moving around too much because they just don't want it to hurt. They'll stop using the litter box because squatting hurts. And they're gonna bleed and they're gonna get abscesses. There's a whole lot of mess that comes from not brushing your cat. So brushing is totally necessary. Another thing that's great about brushing is it helps you inspect your cat. You're inspecting them for fleas, you're inspecting them for things like injuries. Um, that, you know, a lot of times, let's say cats are arguing with one another and your cat has a little wound from either a tooth or a claw, well that thing can get abscessed really easily, so brushing will help you find those things as well. Is brushing necessary for short-haired cats? Absolutely. One of the really big reasons is that you get to sort of stimulate the sebaceous glands that make oil, so th that we're actually encouraging their coat to be shiny on its own accord, and also then they clean themselves, and that prevents things like dander from forming all over the place. And another great thing about brushing is that, that after that, when your cat grooms themselves regularly, which I hope they're doing, they're not gonna swallow as much hair because you're removing that dead hair. So we're not just removing dead hair, we're preventing mats, we're encouraging the sebaceous glands to do their work, we're inspecting our cats for injuries or fleas or anything like that. There is, th that's how important brushing is. Now, we've established that uh, Andy needs to brush Lola May on the regular, and right now what we're seeing is two different sides of brushing. One is that it can be a really pleasant thing. We know that cats are much more uh, responsive when you're petting here, when you're petting here, when you're going here, 
Once you get past the shoulders, a lot of times you're gonna have some issues. Why is that? Well, here we've got scent glands, and, and I mean, honestly, when you see cats like, you know, headbutt, head bonk you, when they walk up against a piece of furniture and just rub their face on it, it's just all about the scent glands and it feels good to them. And there's a chance that once you get below the shoulders, it's not gonna feel good. Why is that, Jackson? Well, let me tell you. One of the main culprits here is hair follicle receptors. Hair follicle receptors basically are, are almost sort of antennas. And those antennas will, when the brushing starts, will register that something feels good. And I bet you that Lola Mae is one of those cats where the hair follicle receptors fail to shut down after the brushing or the petting begins. And so it goes from feeling really good to feeling really like, oh, and then that'll turn to pain after a little while. They get overstimulated. So in a way, Lola Mae is doing you a favor here because she's saying enough and walking away. Let's let's look at an example of that. And no matter how much I try, like if I go around and try to brush other places, like she'll just, she'll just turn around and she'll get distracted and she'll want me to keep brushing her face. Right there. Okay, so one of the things, Andy, I want you to look at here is that as you're doing the brushing, then Lola Mae's tail is doing the swishing and that gets more and more pronounced as you brush. And then you see right there that you're done brushing and she's still doing this. So this is sort of a universal, this, this is a tail. This is sort of a sort of a universal sign from cats, um, unless they're the kind of cat that their tail is always going. And I know there's a lot of you guys that are going to say that. That lets you know that, that you're agitating your cat. So probably not the, the best thing to continue doing in that moment. So that is a mixed blessing. At least, Andy, Lola May is sending you a very clear message that I don't like this. Swish, 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 now I'm walking away, which tells you that any further attempts to brush her is not gonna work. So how do we work this out? The first thing that I want you to look at, Andy, is the fact that you are rewarding the behavior. You don't know that you are, but you are. That's what I'm here to tell you. Why, why is that? Okay, she comes up, you brush her face, she loves that and then you brush the side, she walks away. How do you get her back up? You get the treats, she comes back up. Brush the face, brush the side, walk away. She sees this as one long sort of clicker training, you know, session. It's like I'm going through an agility course here. I go through the hoop, I go around the, the cones, and I come back and I get a treat. I come up, you brush my face, brush my side, I walk away, bring the treat. You know, you see what we're doing here. So it really is important that you uh, remove the sort of ritual around this whole thing and just start thinking about it from square one again. And the way that I would do it is that you wait until she's not like this, that she's not the hyper monkey, you know, walking around the house, that she's more like the sleepy monkey, and that you guys are having one of those moments of just quiet on the couch. Your brush is next to you at all times. Just like, and look, all we're trying to do is make sure that no mats are forming, that we're really just separating all the hairs out. So if she's lying on her side, we just do a few little things as you're talking gently to her, just a few little things, then we stop. So you guys, that's the specific to Andy and Lola Mae is we'll separate out the rituals, this is pleasurable, this is something that I'm going to brush, and yes, I will give you a treat after. When will I not give you a treat? I will not give you a treat after the face brush. That's, that should be fun and reward in itself. The other thing is, all right, you might not love this for a moment, but that is when I give you the treats. And, Andy, hear me here, that's one of the only times that she gets treats. I, I will say this, uh, as I've said it in many other videos, your cat should be earning their treats. It's not something that we just dish out because you're the cute monkey. We do this because you just did something that I know isn't your favorite. Here you go. You just did something for me and for the greater good, and so here you go. And so you'll see, if you really commit to this, Andy, and you really separate those two things out, making sure you give reward for things that she earned, and doing it at a time where she might be a little more mellow and watching her tail, watching her sort of agitation level, and backing off when that moment comes so that we don't make it a constantly negative thing that we're trying to then counter program with treats, if that makes sense. And for all of you guys, I think that this sort of holds true. That brushing is something that should be done when your cat is not all hyped up because it, sh it usually does make them a little more hyper. Before you say it, because I know you're gonna, many cats mellow out when they're being brushed. Okay, there, I said it. Um, so your cat may be all hyped out and then they start to get the brush and they're like, ooh, yeah, and they just mellow and they treat it like a spa day. That's great. And you guys already win and you don't need my help, do you? <laughs> it's for the rest of you guys whose cats are more like Lola Mae. 
So wait till you have a chill moment. Um, reward it with, with whatever it is they love after the fact, and that could just be more love, um, but it could be treats. Remember to withhold those treats until after they've done something you want them to do. Also, there's different kinds of brushes. Right here, if you take a look at what Andy is using, that's called a slicker brush. So those have the metal teeth to them, and they're usually very tightly spaced. Uh, that is my brush of choice when I'm working with my cats. They all seem to like that a lot. That said, there's a lot of different types of brush, different materials that are used, not the, the metal tines, but, but something a little more spaced out, maybe even sort of bamboo or wooden tines. Um, there's different uh, spacings for different cats. Try them all. The one thing that's not gonna help you is one that sort of looks like, it's like a very soft bristled hairbrush. That's a hairbrush. It's not gonna separate anything. It might feel good, but it's not gonna do the job. I would be remiss to not bring this up right here. This is Jackson Galaxy Solutions Stress Stopper. This is something that you can put on your cat both before and after brushing. So it's something that if you put it on beforehand, just sort of energetically brings them into focus, which is something clearly that uh, Lola May could benefit from. But if your cat is kind of chill anyway, and we just want to bring down that overstimulation after brushing is done, there it is, right? You're giving them treats. You're also taking a few drops in the palm of your hand, rubbing your hands together. Quick pet to end the session, and that will just help bring a little calm. Stress stopper. All right, you guys, that's the answer for Andy. Andy, I really hope that helped you. And Lola May, I know that helped you a little bit, although I just removed some treats from your life, so sorry. And, you know, cat daddy knows best sometimes. Anyway, if you guys would like your questions answered, just like Andy just did, all you gotta do, zoop, go to this link right down here and send in you asking the question and your cat doing what Lola Mae was doing, which is turning off cameras, running around, doing anything besides getting brushed. Uh, but, you know, it, it, the more entertaining, the better it is. The, more, the cuter it is, the better it is. Anyway, send it on in and hopefully I will then answer your question. Don't forget, subscribe, hit that bell right there because that makes everything flow smoothly in the YouTubeosphere. <laughs> all right, you guys, until next time, all light and all love and all mojo to you.